we don't tap into the fullness that he has because of our brain. (laughs) You know, we, because of our natural understanding of things that how much has our natural limit us from walking in the greater spiritually in that fullness of Christ being in us. So I'm able to receive everything that God has for me because I'm not understanding it with the 10% of my brain, my flesh. (laughs) I'm in the spirit. So therefore I can have understanding of what this word means to me. Welcome everybody to Winning Conversations. First Fridays, Eric and Nikki Deaton. We're here with Pastors Justin and Annette Woo-hoo. Bridges. It's so glad to be back. It's yes, good to be back with you again. Be back. It's May. Tomorrow's the fourth. And so we say, May the fourth be with you. <laughs> it's just a joke. Please no letters. Uh we were just we were talking last month about uh yeah. our opening scripture in Colossians. Mm-hmm. Well, get kicked off that's all right with you guys. Let's go. Y'all been good? Doing yeah, yes. we're good. It says in the Passion Translation, Colossians 1 27. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people, and God wants everyone to know it. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. just as you were reading that, it made me think of, um, you know, Ephesians 1, uh, and I think Nikki might have brought out last month, where it said the eyes of our understanding would be opened. That we would know the hope of his calling, mm-hmm. and the next one is the the inheritance right. that we have in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his power. While you're reading that, I just got this image. Um, you know, it was like this, this like treasure chest, just yeah. op- this opening yeah. up. You know, maybe I shouldn't have got an image of, um, you know, what was the the, the, the pirate movie? Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, just you know, just this treasure chest, this mountain of gold, and yeah. you know, just there, inexhaustible. Yeah, and just this oh. this treasure tr- chest that we have. That's the inheritance that we have as believers. The exceeding greatness of His power, who we're called to be. Man, that just excites me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, good. that excites me. And, yeah. and here, you know, we, we can we can sit here and you can sit at home or just driving around and just going throughout your day and and you can you can have a sense of feeling of defeated. But when you realize there's this treasure chest right. that's been made available to me as a believer. Right. That I'm the righteous of God, that Christ is in me, I'm in Christ, that the love of God is available, the peace of God, the joy, Holy faith, Christ. patience, everything, everything. that's in heaven. Complete. Complete. Right. And that's on the inside of us. Amen. Man, that excites me. So yeah. Amen. anyone. Yeah, I wonder how many of us as Christians, when we get to heaven. I thought about this and it says that this, that all the fullness of God was in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Christ is on the inside of us. So the potential for all the fullness of God, you think about that, the potential of all the fullness of God lives within us. And I wonder how much of that will, when we get to heaven, we'll have realized in our earthly life. Wow. How much did we walk in or not walk in? Right. Would it be 25%, 35%? 50 percent yeah i mean the goal to be wow. that every christian lives a hundred percent in the fullness Amen. of what god has in christ jesus who's in us right that's it. right that's you know it. i think we limit ourselves so much i mean even from a natural perspective that um, eric is they what do they neurologists say and they say that we may only use 10 to 20 percent of our brain 10 the capacity (laughs) (laughs) 10 you know so so that that's but looking spiritually it's the same thing it's like it's like we we don't tap into the fullness that he has because of our brain (laughs) (laughs) you know we because of our natural understanding of things Mm -hmm. that how much has our natural limit us from walking in the greater Mm -hmm spiritually in that fullness of Christ being in us. Right. That's why my prayer is always expand my capacity, Lord. Expand oh, yeah. my capacity to know you yeah. more, to understand, yeah. to be flooded with that light, you know. Right. To and keep your to mind. Him. You know, the Bible yeah. says keep your mind stayed mm-hmm. on him. Yeah. You know, so as things come, you know, if we've got this constant expectation of glory, yeah. if we've got this constant revelation of who he is in us, which makes us who we are in him. Right. But keeping your mind on that. You know, I think that's like, it's good church talk, but if we don't 
take it outside of church, yeah. you know, and when things come, I mean, the littlest thing can like send you spiraling. It's true. You know, instead of, okay, wait a second. What does the Bible say? What does God say? Right. You know, and getting your mind back on these things that we're talking about mm -hmm. so that you can walk in glory. That's it. Yeah. Have an expectation of glory every day. and a manifestation. Every day. Every day. Every minute of every day. Every minute. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So if you're a believer and you're watching this, you know, you, you will want to experience the fullness of God in your life. And that's what we're, that's what we're talking about. If you're not a believer and say someone's uh, passed this on to you, or, or maybe you came across yeah. this on YouTube or whatever, we want you to know that there's a plan of God for your life since the foundation of the world. Right. And, and there's an expectation for you to experience his glory. You just have to believe on Jesus Christ and believe that he died yeah. and rose from the grave. Amen. Make him the Lord of your life today, and you can experience all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Thank Pastor you. Eric. That's good. In uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, and this is uh, another scripture for, that, for us to key in on and, and go forward with, um, is verse 1 of chapter 8 of Romans says, There is therefore now... Now, now <laughs> no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. I have no condemnation. Right. Thank because you. I'm in Christ Jesus. It says, who do not walk according to the flesh. Now, I need to say something here because mm -hmm. some people talk and they'll say, oh, well, I don't have any condemnation because I'm in Christ Jesus. That's a true statement. But the issue is if I continue walking after my flesh, right, then... The flesh is going to be what condemns me. Right. My mind, the mind of my flesh, because the chapter before, Paul's saying there's two laws at work. Mm -hmm. There, There's the law of spirit of life, and then there's the law of the flesh and the mind. So, right. so if I continue yielding to my flesh, my natural mind that's at empty with God is going to keep me in a place of condemnation, not yeah. God. It's going to be yeah. my mind that keeps me there. God's not. God doesn't condemn anyone. Mm. God condemned sin in the flesh when he condemned Jesus. Right. 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 And and okay. so so what happens is a con condemnation means like you you have a house that's condemned meaning it's no longer livable. Right. Meaning no one can else can live there. So so what happens is when we're living according to our flesh and we give in to our flesh, then what happens is the law of my mind is going to keep me in this place of I'm no good, I'm unworthy. Therefore, what Paul said in the chapter four, we have to live according to another law. And so he lets us know what that is. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So when I'm in Christ, mm -hmm. right. I stay in this place of no condemnation. Amen. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now listen to this. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. In Christ. We're talking about Christ, Christ in us. Right. Mm -hmm. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Man, we could read this whole chapter. Right. But this understanding that I'm in Christ Jesus, and because I'm in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free. Amen. Yeah, and it rules. It reigns in my life. So yes. I'm able to receive everything that God has for me. Because I'm not understanding it with the 10% of my brain, my flesh. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm in the spirit. So yeah. therefore, I can have understanding of what this word means to me. Yeah, we have to become aware. Yeah. Give our attention to the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Now, uh, we were talking in the break, and I know you and I were talking earlier, and you were talking about Philippians 3, about what Paul said. Because he had he had these understandings of, of, man, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He had this understanding that counting the law, he was blameless. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was doing everything right, but yet his he had to change his perspective to the point where he no longer were pursuing all those things, but pursuing his determined purpose was something else. So, what were you? It sharing was to earlier? know to know Christ. Yeah, his determined purpose was to know Christ, and and. We know that Christ is the, the representation of God who right. is love. So love and law, don't they just don't mix. Sometimes don't mix. Like, they you know, don't. here you had Paul, who was a Pharisee of Pharisees, knew the word, yeah. the black and white word, mm -hmm. backwards and forwards. But yet it was like, I think, wasn't it Job that said, I've, I knew you by the hearing mm -hmm. of the word, but now I see you, I know you. I know And you. so when Paul 
had yeah. that had that moment on that road to Damascus, everything that he had ever learned in this word that he thought he was living by was now Jesus. He says he counted it as nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> oh, that's to, not for, the word he used. <laughs> yeah, dung. Dung. Yeah, to, to know him, to know him, to really know him. To really know him. Yeah, that's yeah. good. The things that we have learned previously before we met Christ, they, they, may, they may carry us through things as, as our education for our job, and, and those things are, are great and they're needful, but it cannot compare yeah. to coming to know him. And he is this word. Yeah. yeah. He yes. is the word. The word, he is the word come, become he, flesh. I want to read this to you because I know growing up religious, in a, in a religious home, I never felt like I could be good enough. I never felt like I was, I could do anything right. You know, mm -hmm. I, I always fell short. I heard that scripture all the time. You know, I, my <laughs> sins put Jesus on the cross and I, you yeah. know, I'm not righteous. All yeah. have sinned, all fallen, have sinned short. fallen short. So, but it says in second Timothy three sixteen, it says this scripture, this word, this scripture is God breathed. It says it's given by inspiration and profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience and for training. It's for my training in righteousness in holy living, in conformity to God's will and thought and purpose and action, so that the Son of Man, me, of God, can be made complete and proficient, complete, complete and proficient, <laughs> well-fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So it is through God's word, through the word, right. this living thing, this yes, is living, alive. is how I am made complete. This is how I know him. This is how I will know what his plan and purpose is for my life. Yep. Amen. Knowing him. Knowing him is being intermingled in, and becoming. And it's not, some, it's not what somebody else says about God. No, it's it's what, what I, I have to have an experience with this living word. Right. And that's how we get to know him. Yeah. And just be connected to that word. You know, I think if you if you look at Jesus' instructions, I believe, and, you know, if you look at John 14, 15, 16, and 17, it was all about preparing the disciples to be victorious after mm -hmm. he would leave. Right. You know, really 14, 15, 16, because 17 is his prayer. Mm -hmm. um, but when he says in John 15, if you abide in me, mm. yeah, and my, my word abides abide in you. In you. And so that that was that was that was the that was the connection. That was yeah. Yeah. that was that was Jesus telling us on how do we know the Father? How do we gain much fruit? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it'll be done by my Father. You you know, so so it's this this connection, this abiding in him and, and it's in that that we know him. Mm -hmm. That we know him. That we're intertwined. Yes. intermingled with him. I think the Passion Translation does a great job of that, of, of always talking about the oneness. Mm -hmm. And it goes, it, it talks about being intermingled yeah. mm -hmm. with him over and over again. And yeah, I think that's, like this, where you can't tell yeah, where he right. ends and you end. So when, so you know, we connected. started with that verse, Colossians 127, yeah. Christ in you, yeah. you know. And so yeah. Christ in you is for the purpose of us mm -hmm. becoming wrapped up in him. Amen. Yeah. And it's a oneness that happens. And so Everything he can do, we can do. And we have to stay within that, yeah. good. you know, within who he is. Yeah. Amen. And it's that both of those working together. You know, just as you were saying that and, and just in the scripture that you, you were reading um, and talking about Paul knowing him, think about it. He was intermingled with religion. Right. You know, because that word know is where we get our word intercourse. And it's intermingling of two lives. So it's just this locking together. So all Paul's life, he was intermingled with religion. Mm -hmm. And he says, he goes, I don't want to, I, 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 I count that as rubbish. So that lets me know. He was like, he was like, I don't want to be entangled with that anymore. Right. I don't want to be having intercourse anymore with that. I don't want to yeah. be that consuming my life. I don't want to be intimate with the religion anymore. I my determined purpose is to be intimate with him. My, my determined purpose is to know him. And I love how he goes in and he, and he says in Philippians, he says, not that I've already attained. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, I'm not saying that I know everything yet. I'm not saying that I'm to a place of, of having complete knowledge in this. He says, not that I've already attained or I'm already perf perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus have laid hold of me. 
So he's saying he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, and he says, I'm, I'm pressing towards that. Yeah. I want to attain the glory. I want to lay hold of what lay hold of me. Right. I want to know that. I, I want to know. I, I can't get enough of it. I, I got to have more of yeah. it. And, and I want my life to be consumed with that. Right. <laughs> but, but how often, even in our personal lives, where we, we've been enta- entangled with just church stuff, I mean, just dealing with just natural things, dealing with even from not even in places of leadership, but just all the things that we have to do, be consumed with so many things. And, and the, uh, I mean, just so easy people around us and attitudes and the the daily grind at work and all those things. And those things are needful that we, we have to do. But, but at the same time, it's like, it's like, are we knowing him? Right. Are we intermingled with him? Yeah. Well, the Bible says that. God is love. Yeah. So when you couple that and you take that God is love with Mark 11, mm-hmm. it says have faith in God, mm-hmm. then you could substitute the word love. Have faith in love. Mm-hmm. So what would love do? Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things, like when Nikki and I first got married, we were in uh, Birmingham, Alabama after a few months, and we would go to this Tuesday night um for lack of better terms, it was it was like a prosperity uh, class. And this was the first time I had heard that God wants me to prosper. Yeah. Now, I knew I was supposed to tithe because if I didn't, the curse would come on me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so the, it, wasn't the heavens pre- wouldn't be it wasn't presented the other way. Yeah. But now I'm hearing, you know, God wants you to prosper. Well, if you think about that, if you, you know, we love our kids. Would you say to your kid, you know, no, I want you to struggle. I want you to be poor, you know, to teach you a lesson. Wow. No parent would want their kid to, to do that. They, they want their kid to be prosperous. They want them to have, you know, everything that they could possibly have in life so that they could experience the fullness of life. And that's what God, everything in him, he wants us to experience the fullness of everything that he provided through Jesus that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. on the cross. That's it. Through his resurrection, when Paul when Paul said that, that I may know him, he says, and the power of his resurrection. That's right. Everything when Jesus went to hell and defeated death, hell, and the grave, and it says that had they only have known, you know what right. he was going to do, they would have never crucified him. And so he went and and he. The power of his resurrection. Come on. Beat the devil Come up. On. Come on. Come right. on. It said he made an open display of him. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So so for what? So that all the fullness of God, so we can experience the power and the goodness of God and the love of God. Yeah. And and so when we flip this to us as Christians, mm-hmm. is there religion still in the world today? Yes. But it says that they will know us by not by our religion. Right. Yeah. But by our love. Right. For one another. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so when people see, well, the church, they just seem to argue back and forth with each other and this and that. But when I know all the what, reason I'm saying is I know all this has got to come together before Jesus returns. Mm-hmm. Because for us to be the glorious church mm-hmm. that he's returning for, yeah. all of this is going to come together. But God wants us to experience his fullness. Mm-hmm. Because why? Because he loves us. Right. So we can have faith in the love of God, that the goodness of God is going to be displayed in our life, yeah. that his power is going to be displayed in our life, that his presence is going to be yeah. displayed in our life. You know, and that's every what he day. wants to do. And, and whatever he tells us to do, it should be for that purpose, that he wants us to experience his goodness. So when he tells us like like what people might would consider law, like tithe or give, mm-hmm. you know, it's not so that you can just have an experience with giving. Right. It's because he wants you to have experience with love, with goodness, with power, because all of those are inherent in that. If you're doing it in the fullness of God, if you, if that word comes alive to you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A little bit ago, you were talking about being intermingled. He was intermingled with law, you know? And I mean, from a natural standpoint, nobody would want, Nobody would want to have sex apart from love, yeah. or we shouldn't want to. That's not a fullness that's of lust. what that's meant to yeah. be. Yeah. And yeah. so you leave empty, Correct. you know, in that kind of experience. And that's the same thing with the law, is you're going to leave feeling empty and not satisfied, yeah. right. you know, because it's about intermingling with love. Mm-hmm. It's about being intermingled with God himself. Yeah. And so, you know, the law isn't done away with. Yeah. 
you know, but we're supposed to experience God in every part yeah. of obe- hearing and obeying, right. hearing and doing. I feel yeah. like I need a loving kiss right now. <laughs> oh, I, I, mean, I'm, I don't want to no. I don't miss out on what you're doing. No, he's not going to kiss you. <laughs> no, you kiss him. <laughs> uh, but the evidence to the world has to be that love. You know, yes. if you're intermingled with religion, it leaves you empty. Yeah. You're still a hard person. Yeah. You're not a loving person just because you follow the law to, you know, to the T. So what? You're, yeah. I mean, you're still, you're, yeah, you look like you ate lemons. You look sour and you, mm-hmm. but if you're intermingled with Christ, if, if he, if you know who he is on the inside mm-hmm. of you, then the evidence will be love to others. Right. And that's how the world will know yeah. that Christ is in us. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, cause really the bottom line of the law, it says it was, our, it was our school teacher. It was, it was, it was a teacher to us to recognize that we needed a savior. Right recognize that we couldn't do it in ourselves couldn't. and and that we would fall flat on our faces if we would try and so we understand but christ fulfilled the law yeah, right. and that we have him and now we christ is in us yes yeah. we overthink it we make mm-hmm. it so hard we yeah. really do yeah. and it's not supposed I to be i think it comes back to what i think you might have said faith and love yeah. so that love christ is in us mm-hmm. and he's a fulfillment of the law and we know love is the fulfillment of the law yeah, yeah. So that love is in us to go to to be just like him, yes. to experience the glory just like he did. He came to show us what a man with God looked like on earth. Yes, and so that's good. And it says faith works by love. Yeah. Right. So oh, that's true. You know, oftentimes you see in the in the gospels where Jesus was moved mm-hmm. with compassion. Right. He was he was moved by love, mm-hmm. and, and and that faith became and then miracles happened because his faith was working by love. Yeah. Amen. That's, I mean, I want to close with this um, because this really ties in how to close this out with remembering Christ in us, and it's uh, Ephesians 3. And Paul prays that prayer, and we don't understand the persecution that was going on in his day. This was, I mean, this was hard. He was in a very, uh, writing to the church of Ephesus, the church of Ephesus was a very carnal, lustful place, and that and I've got to go there, and just knowing how the city was built, and and what they did and who they worshiped and the temples mm. uh, that they would go to and things that would happen in the temples and right. all those different things. So Paul's writing to, to the church of Ephesus and he, he's, he's writing, and so he's ultimately writing to Timothy and he's telling him that, that you'd be strengthened with all might wow. in your inner man. Right. And this is what we need to understand. Yes. Paul's telling him, hey, be strengthened with all might in your mm-hmm. inner, on the inside. Mm-hmm. And he tells them this, that you would, he said that you would know the lengths. This is his prayer, that you would know the, the love of God, that you would know the lengths, the depths, and the heights yeah. of the love. And it says, and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. So that's what would strengthen yeah. him. Yeah. Right. That right. knowledge. Yeah. The lengths. That's what's going right. to sustain depths. you yeah. in what you're getting ready to do to me. So when Paul says, <laughs> yeah. my determined purpose is to know him, he says that I would know that you would know the love of Christ that passes knowledge that you would be filled yeah. with all the, all the fullness, fullness of God. Of God. Yeah. So when I know the love of Christ, when I have an encounter with the love of Christ, I'm filled with all the fullness, the fullness of God. What does the fullness of God look like? Right. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I, I mean, my natural mind can't yeah. fathom fathom the, unfathomable fathomable, <laughs> unfathomable. <laughs> it, what does that mean to be without fathom <laughs> to be without fathom unfathomable yes so the i mean to to the lengths yeah. the depths and the heights to know the love of christ that passes knowledge that we it passes knowledge meaning our natural mind can't right. understand yeah, this right but you and i natural. we would all be filled with the fullness of god and then the next verse says this that he is, it goes on and says that he is something like this. He is exceedingly, mm-hmm. abundantly, above all we could ask, think, dream, or imagine. And a lot of times we stop there, but it says according, yeah. according. This is according, yes. according, according to the power yeah. that works yeah. in me. Yes. In me. It goes back to Christ is in me. Yeah, yeah it does. So when, when I know the love of Christ, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, there's all of a sudden power working in me. Right. Mm. You know Ooh. what? Yeah. 
That's the good. enemy can't. The enemy <laughs> can't stop it. Can't touch this. No. Yeah. Can't touch this. Yeah. Can't touch this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, in, and in His love, this Bible says that He's rich in mercy Amen. because Amen. of His great love. Amen. And you think about that. Yeah. He's rich in mercy because of His great love. Yeah. So. People that say, "Well, I just, I just seem to struggle. I just seem to, I, I just, I just, I'm not very good at this." You, if you will continue to run mm -hmm. to God, yeah. Amen. every single time, the the struggle will become less yeah. and less and less yeah. because you will experience the mercy of God, the love of God, yeah. the forgiveness of God, the blood of Jesus. That's yeah. all in the love yeah. of God for us. And once you once you understand that then you can walk in that right. freedom and that liberty mm -hmm. that the love of God provides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and know the it, power. And you have know to, the power. And, and, and really you have to stop knowing yourself by the flesh. Stop knowing, yes. rehearsing your failures, rehearsing what other people did. Cause that's that you're, you're, then you're staying over here in this knowing of all that you can see what happened, what took place, mm -hmm. instead of getting over here and focusing on and knowing him. Right. Yeah, that reality needs that to be being more real. Him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that truth, yeah. More real than what more we think. More real than what you yeah. think, yeah. exactly. Well, yeah. Pastor Nikki, why don't you close us out? <laughs> <Sure. we're> <laughs> <laughs> Father, oh. we just thank you for revelation, continued revelation yes. on who we are and who Jesus is in us, Father, and who, who you are, that we might yeah. know the hope of your calling for us. Father, I thank you for everything that's been spoken in this broadcast. Father, make it real to us. Seal it in our hearts, Holy Spirit, that we might walk in the power and the life and the love of it. Yes, Father. Father, I thank you that we are, as we know your love, we will be fully filled and flooded mm -hmm. with I who love you it. are. Glory and we will walk flooded. and talk and look yes. like that and become the glorious church that we're meant to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today. We hope you were blessed by this, and we'll see you next time on Winning Conversations. Go give them Jesus.